Hi everyone, Denise from Lost City Knits here. Now I'm sitting out on the deck as I often do and it's really close to being full on sweater weather here. Now the mornings and evenings are cool enough that I can pull out a little bit of wool to put on. Yesterday I pulled out my Crystal Visions pullover. Now this is a sweater I designed using the unspun Icelandic wool that I have in front of me. And I reach for that wool because it's lightweight. It doesn't weigh a lot and I don't have a lot of bulk on me. I have a lot of freedom of movement, reasonable sleeves, but not the deep long sleeves. And that's something that I like to wear. Uh, the Plotolope, and in case you're wondering how to spell it, there it is. The Plotolope is the traditional wool in Iceland. Uh, it's lightweight, it's warm without being heavy, but it's also a great economy yarn. Now we import it, not just for me, but also for you. And it's a great price. So a wheel, and this is a wheel or a plate of yarn, costs about $9.50 plus shipping. Now the sweater I'm wearing, I used three white, one each of two blues. So a kit for a sweater like this, up to a medium size, is about $60. Now a little bit bigger, you might add one more wheel of the main color, but still you're gonna get it a great looking sweater for well under a hundred dollars. And we think that's a great buy. Now. I've recorded a little video. If you haven't worked with Plotolope, there are a few things to learn about it. And I think this video will help. Anyway, happy knitting everyone. Hi knitters. This morning I wanted to show you one of my favorite yarns to work with. Now, what you see in front of you are some of the shades of the Plotolope unspun Icelandic wool. Now, this wool is so popular in Iceland. It is the traditional yarn used, and it's even found in the grocery stores there. So, while it's popular there, some knitters in the United States may not have encountered it yet. And it does take a little getting used to. I'm going to pull a little ball here. These are some samples that I've used in classes. The Icelandic sheep is a dual coated sheep. That means that its fleece has both a short and a long staple. And if I look at this yarn, I realize it's a single, which means it only has one ply and it's not twisted. All of the fibers are going in the same direction. By saying it's dual coated means that if I take this yarn and hold it a finger's inch apart and tug on it, nothing happens. Because that is within the short staple. If I go three inches apart and tug on it, it does drift apart. It takes a little getting used to to work with this yarn, but it's really worth the effort many knitters have found. So, what I'm going to show you here is that this wheel, or cake if you want to call it that, or plate if you want to call it that, you can see this wound around. There may be a little bit of yarn on the outside, but you generally want to pull from the center. Now I'm going to gently tug and I may get a little bit of yarn that comes out in a blob and that's okay. Now, now the wine colored yarn here I pulled a little bit out and generally oops that broke so I'll pull a little more if I need to pull out a blob, that's okay. You can see here I've got a little bit of a blob. I'm going to find the end. 
or simply tug it apart, set that aside, and I'll come back to it. But I've got plenty of wool to work with if I keep tugging that and gently bring some out. I will usually have two or three yards out of the center before I ever start working. Now this is a swatch that I have that I will show you how I work with the yarn. I will also say I'm going to bring over here something in progress that I'm working on and with that one I'm using a wooden needle that's slick. That is a Knit Picks Harmony and it has a nice slick surface so the yarn moves freely on it. Now this is a metal needle, and so the yarn will move sl smoothly on it. What I would not recommend is a bamboo needle because it has plenty of drag and it slows things down and may cause your tension to change so that you're tugging on the yarn. I'm going to put my tip of my needle here, and I'm going to show you that when I'm knitting with this yarn, I'm only knitting with it hanging loosely in my hand. I'm not tensioning it, I'm not wrapping it, or doing anything that we normally might do to have better control or greater tension on the yarn. Because every time I tug on that, it's tightening it. I want it to move pretty freely. So I'm going to take a stitch, knit a stitch, knit a stitch, and you can see that the yarn is just hanging there. Now, if I were to knit and keep a really tight edge, I'm trying here to get it really snug and stretch it out, it could drift apart when I'm working with it. That doesn't bother me a whole lot because I'm used to it. And what I'll do is simply put the yarn together, give it a little twist, those fibers will grab each other, and I go back to my knitting. Now I'm always going to have two to three yards worth of yarn pulled out at any given time. I'm going to my tail out of the way here. Actually, I'm going to simply break that tail off fairly close just for demonstration purposes and so I don't actually gently knit with that. Now you can see that I have plenty of the wine colored pulled out. If you want to, winding the yarn you pull out into a ball might work better for you, especially if you're just getting used to it. It teaches you how to handle that yarn in a gentle way. So, continually pulling, having several yards come out, and twisting them around helps you learn how to use the yarn. Now if you're finding that that yarn breaks often, it may be that you're tensioning it quite tightly. Do you have it twisted around fingers? Are you tugging it? Do you have a good lead on the yarn as it comes out of the wheel? Or are you knitting really close to the wheel? So as I continue to knit along with the wine colored plotolope. I want to show you also one of the things I like about it is the ease in changing colors. So I'm just going to break a little bit of that wine 
and pick up some of the apricot. I'm just going to take those two raw pieces and twist them a little bit. Let the fibers grab onto each other and start knitting. You'll see a little bit of blending of the two and that's awfully fun. It means that both colors are being caught and suddenly I'm right in knitting with just the apricot. I don't have anything there to weave in. And that's one of the things I like about it. If I did change colors and want an abrupt color and start with, say, the blue right there, I would have a little bit of a tail. And I probably would not weave those in anyway when I come back or finish my garment. I might twist them, I might just gently tug them together, twist them together, tie them, and rub it, and have those colors grab onto each other. One of the other things I like about this yarn is it doesn't really slip off the needles and run. So I'm going to pull my needle out there. and. Tug. You can see the stitches. Pull that orange back behind me there. You can see the stitches aren't really going anywhere. I'm going to have to pick it apart to pull those live stitches free. And still, they're just going to stand up and not go anywhere. So the Plotolope unspun Icelandic wool. It's a single. It's lightweight, yet insulating and warm, so that you don't have a heavy, thick garment on.